Uh, okay, just one second. Okay, good evening, uh, everyone, and welcome uh, to our first meeting uh, of 2023. Uh, I hope everyone had an enjoyable uh, holiday season. Uh, wishing everybody a, a new year. Uh, and just before uh, we do begin our general council agenda again of January 10th, uh, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to uh, have a moment of silence. Uh, and sending our most sincere condolences uh, to former Chief Bill Montour uh, and his family and friends. As we all know, uh, Bill uh, has contributed many things to this community uh, and has really been a trailblazer uh, for many projects uh, and what buildings we see here in our community today. Uh, he was a fantastic uh, leader. Uh, I think he was one of really bringing our people together uh, and what that looked like. And I know Bill uh, has, he mentored me all through my uh, years as well and really want to pay my respects and, and honor uh, Bill uh, and his legacy. I know uh, that'll live on uh, through many of his members of his family and so forth. And so with that being said, I wanna send again our most heartfelt uh, sincere condolences on behalf of the elected council to former chief uh, Bill Mentor and if we can, at this um, moment, have a moment of silence. Okay, now uh, counsel for that. Uh, and as you uh, will notice, uh, our, our statement uh, on uh, former chief's passing uh, was just released late uh, this afternoon. Uh, and again, uh, sending our most heartfelt, sincere condolences to the family. Uh, I'm going to, at this point, open the meeting up and uh, looking to any identification of any media on the line. Donna from the Two Row Times. Hi, good evening, Donna. Hi, and David Moses from CKRZ Radio. Hi, good evening, David. Is there any other representatives from the Turtle, from the Turtle Island News? Okay, seeing or hearing that I have the two row in CKRZ. Uh, next, we will move to the adoption of our agenda. We do have a number of delegations this evening. I'll open the floor up for any additions, and if not, look to a mover and seconder of adopting our general council agenda of January 10th, 2023. I'll move that, Chief. Moved by Kerry, seconded by Michelle. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, our first delegation on our agenda is uh, Rebecca Jamison uh, from Six Nations Polytechnic. Uh, this has been uh, on our agenda, and I know that our committee obviously uh, was um, comprised to get to this point. Uh, so uh, with that being said, uh, I'll pass the floor over uh, to uh, Rebecca to walk us through uh, this item. Okay, thank you, Chief, and uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, yes. It's hard to believe it's our first meeting of the year, but we're here. <laughs> so I'm here with the um, what's called the SEED Committee, the Science, Engineering, and Employment Development Committee. And our committee was uh, developed way back in 2002 um, when Six Nations and Imperial Oil uh, came to an agreement and there was an agreement to provide funding to our community to support education and employment opportunities. So that agreement um, is renewed every seven years. So we were asked by council to, the committee was asked by council to renegotiate the agreement and bring it back for consideration to council. And that's why we're here today. Um, as I said, the agreement, first agreement was, uh, we were actually 20 years ago now. So a little bit more than 20 years. So um, the, over, the, over those years, it's been actually over $5 million has come into the community that we have um, the committee administers that money and make sure it goes to initiatives that supports education, training and employment opportunities. 
There have been various things throughout the years and we do an annual report to council. So the recommendation um, that's brought forward to council is that the council um, renew the agreement for another seven years. Um, the first year will be 2023. The amount will be $324,838. Plus there's an escalator for a CPI, which hasn't been published yet. So we don't know what that number is going to be that, you know, but that'll, that'll be automatically added. And then subsequently that same process, that same formula will continue for the next remaining six years of the agreement. So this agreement has gone to council's legal and there have been no issues raised by council's legal have uh, been advised. So uh, that is our recommendation that the council, there's a proposed resolution um, that the council um, approve the agreement to be signed by the chief. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Becky, for walking us through, through this. I know uh, just again for communities uh, information, I believe Becky, this is every seven years uh, yes. that this negotiated that agreement. I know that was one of the conversations that last when the report uh, was um, was presented to council that we were looking at ways to maybe increase. Uh, and I think that's part of the work in which uh, what your your committee has has been doing and to get to this point. Uh, Audrey, questions, comments? Uh, sorry, Audrey, you're on mute. That's the first time this year, Mark. <laughs> anyway, I, I think it's a great idea, and I'll I'll move the motion. Okay, we have a mover on the floor. It's moved by Councillor Audrey Paulus Bombery. Is there a seconder? I'll second it, Melba. Seconded by Melba, and I'll further open the floor for any further questions or comments in relation to the motion. I see Councillor Gregg. Still on mute. No, oh, no, good. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rebecca. Um, it's great that you get that kind of money for us to be able to renew it. Um, my question is, is um, I think you probably already had this in, re in a report. Uh, I was just looking at um, like uh, numbers wise, how, how does it benefit? Um, do we get um, an increase in interest in science? Do we get an increase in engineering and interest in engineering? Have you found that money has been uh, helpful toward developing some professionals, just generally speaking. Generally speaking, I can I can speak from our experience with Six Nations Polytechnic. Um, we now have the SNP STEAM Academy, which is focuses on science, tech, technology, engineering, arts, and math, and that's one of the I would say it's attributed to that to the funding that we've received because we've done a lot of promotional work and education. We run summer camps around science and technology. So I think that's one of the sort of natural outgrowths that have happened. We've had an increase um, in interest from students. At the post-secondary level, it's not really hitting a huge increase yet, but I know we do have more engineering students in post-secondary than we've had before. So that's, that's our plan is to try and keep them moving as long as they can um, get the required prerequisites to get into those programs, yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question and response. Is there any further questions, comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Audrey. Seconder. By Malba. Seconded by Malba to waive second reading on the previous motion. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rebecca, for joining us this evening. Really appreciate all the work. Thank you very much, Chief and Council, for your support. And we'll be back to you with more updates and. Uh, and when it's ready for the official signing, maybe we can have a nice event around that. Great. Thanks. Great. Thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Have a great Hola. evening. Hola. Okay, Council, we're going to continue moving along the agenda here. Our next delegation, I'm not sure if, if they're on the line yet. Uh, Afroza Sultana, the Department of Anthropology at McMaster University. Just Hi, Chief. To... She's just um, logging in right now. Okay, thanks, Brooke. 
So again, this is a recommendation uh, from the ethics committee. And Brooke, if you could just advise when she is fully signed in. And also Brooke, the uh, Christine Workler. I don't know how you pronounce her last name, if that's right or not, but is she also in the waiting room? Yeah, she's going to be um, signing in momentarily. We just went through the recommendation for one really quick. <laughs> so I just okay. emailed to see if um, they can sign on right now. And they, if so, I'm just waiting for them. It should be like a minute. Okay, well, while we're waiting, waiting for them, Council, uh, what we'll do is go to the adoption of the General Council minutes of December 13th. Recommendation 5-1, it's moved by Councillor Michelle, seconded by Audrey. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the minutes? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, again, this is our first meeting. So I'm sure you'll see uh, many more councillor reports coming in as, as we progress throughout the new year. Uh, I'm going to move into scheduling if we can. There's two items under scheduling, actually three, and I have a fourth just pending 7-1. Uh, so we'll start with 7-1. Uh, this is again for myself and councillor Sherry uh, Lynn Hill uh, to travel uh, to attend the Jade Treaty Border Alliance Conference. Uh, again, this is primarily on Jade Treaty border lines in relation to the to UNDRIP. Um, this is uh, happening in Milwaukee uh, on the dates of January 18th and 19th. So there's two separate events. I know we've been getting updates um, uh, from both myself and Sherry Lynn on, on the events uh, that have been partaking through the Alliance itself. So this is a motion to travel. Uh, to that J Treaty Border Alliance for both Sherry Lynn and myself. Looking to a mover in I'll second. Move on. I'll move, move on seven one. Okay, thank you for that, Melba. Moved by Melba, second by Michelle. Further questions, comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. And I'll just hold off as I do see our guests have joined the line. So I'm going to go back to our council agenda under delegation to uh, Alfroza Sul Sultana, the Department of Anthropology. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. You can correct me, uh, but want to welcome you uh, and thank you for joining us this evening to council. Uh, and there is a recommendation on our agendas. We're just looking for the background. So welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate your time. Um, so my name is Afroza, and you pronounced it correctly. Um, and I'm a PhD candidate, just a little bit of myself, um, uh, in the Department of Anthropology at McMaster University. And I worked under direct supervision of Don Martin Hill. Um, and my PhD research that we did together with Six Nations Birthing Center, um, we looked into um, the interrelationship between water insecurity and uh, mother's holistic health. So we kind of look at the complete um, picture, like how it affects mothers physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And these two papers that um, are submitted to you for your consideration and review um, is going to be two chapters of my thesis. And all the, all, I mean, um, both articles are co-authored with Six Nations and Birthing Centers Midwives. Um, the whole research was designed from the beginning to the analysis, what we have done with, with the midwives and under Don supervision. So um, yeah, like I'm happy to, you know, tell more um, if you, I'm not sure how much I should share. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop here and I'm happy to answer any question. No problem. Thank you for that. I know it uh, should be within your Dropbox uh, Council. If there's any specific questions or comments, I see uh, Nathan has his hand raised. Yeah, thanks, Chief. And um, the 
reason why it's here is uh, because ethics has already approved the um, the study uh, to be completed. But the reason it's here to get approval from council is because of the journal articles and to be published. So I'm um, good to move on the publishing of these studies. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for that background and, and also moving. Uh, Councillor Nathan is moving on this recommendation for two and seconded by Councillor Michelle. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to this recommendation? Uh, Greg. Yeah, well, thank you for that study. Uh, I froze it was quite extensive. Uh, I didn't realize, you know, and, and I don't think anybody realizes that the importance of water with our with our health, especially our young mothers, expectant mothers, our our newborns. And uh, you mentioned a couple of things in the study. Um, you know, the possibility of when you have poor water or, or you don't have proper drinking water, how you can get certain diseases, whether it's eczema or intestinal or Basically, they, they switch out of water, they go into more sugary drinks or other drinks that cause other problems. Um, I kind of like the way the study basically brought all that to light. Um, my question is, is there, are you going to go further on and, and maybe look at um, more of a quantitative role? Like, for example, um, would you look towards, okay, the percentage of eczema and in young children on reserve as compared to say um, the provincial average, or you're gonna look at something like uh, overweight babies, for example, because young mothers have to go towards a sugary drink or replace water with other, other unhealthy drinks. And that some, the reason I'm asking you that is because some of these quantitative things that we can use when we apply for, uh, different things like water treatment plants or we apply for or we go into a water class action suit something like that because what you've done is very important and sometimes we can use that to to help us and further i guess betterment better the health of our community but that that was just all the question i had if you were going to proceed further thank you yeah thank you so much uh, i apologize i think my internet was little you know, not in stable, so I may have missed last part of your question, but if I don't answer it, um, please um, ask me again. So yeah, um, we also realized that there is a lot more needs to be done. And my research PhD, um, what we did is a part of a larger project that Don is carrying on. And we kind of like came together to figure out what can be done. Um, you know, so, so we can kind of like use this data and go farther from there. So we are in the process of um, extending our objectives and what can be done with um, Six Nations Health Services. So I'm, like we are in the process of like figuring out what it is um, that needs to be done. But for my, just, just for my PhD part here, <laughs> I think it, it ends here, but the research doesn't end here. We, we will surely go forward with, um, you know, digging into more. We're also trying to think about how or if there's any connections between, you know, the, the reproductive health, like if poor quality of water affects um, the conception, because there is some mention of that, that it could be related to miscarriage or even difficulty in conceiving. Um, so, those issues sh surely need to be addressed. Yeah, so, and um, like you said, that is, is going to be in that GWF water project that we're trying to figure out. And your comments is very, very valuable. And we're gonna definitely address that in our future plan. And I'm not sure if I missed um, last part of your question. So did I miss anything? No, that, no, that's fine, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Greg, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Greg, for your question as well as your response. Is there any further uh, questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing them, it's been moved and seconded. I will go to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? 
seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. I'll look to waive second reading on the next one. So I want to thank you, uh, Afroza. Sorry, uh, Nathan, did you have a further question, comment? Uh, I want to thank you again, Alfrosa, for joining us uh, this evening uh, and look forward again to your next steps. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you for your comments and, and really, I appreciate it so much. Take thank care. you. Have a great evening. You as well. Bye-bye. Okay, Council, uh, continuing on with our agenda, our next delegation, again, from the Ethics Committee, we have our guest on the line right, uh, right now, Christine, the project lead. Uh, again, presenting her manuscript of exploring the re uh, relevance of psychology-based resilience app for Indigenous youth. Uh, good evening and welcome to General Counsel, uh, Christine. I'll pass the floor over to yourself just to give a little high-level background and if there's any further questions or comments from any counselors. So over to you and welcome. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, I am a uh, prof in McMaster University in pediatrics and psychiatry. I'm also teaching at the Adler Graduate School for Clinical Psychology in Toronto and brought into this project with Don as with Afroza on the El Neganis project to work um, in different ways, primarily with Gawanian School and um, to look at various aspects of resilience, including uh, water anxiety and resilience in those areas. Um, this research was conducted during COVID, which created a lot of challenges because we were uh, trying to work with youth and uh, their caregivers giving consent. Uh, we had two pieces to this project. One was asking community members first about what they thought about the uh, resilience app and what they thought about uh, adaptations might be. And the second was to talk with youth directly and uh, get their input. And the research article that you have in your Dropbox was the first piece, um, which was from the community members, adult community members. And uh, I don't know if you want me to do a little, uh, go through some of the resources or uh, the off, off um, shoots of this, um, or just stick with the, issue at hand, which was what journal it should go to. And um, the Child Abuse and Neglect Journal, I'm the editor in chief of, and um, they represent the International Society for the Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect. It's an international global group. And they had their, uh, during, I guess, during 2020, uh, they, or maybe it was 2021, they had their uh, international conference here in Canada and tried to have Indigenous uh, research and issues really highlighted in that conference. As a result of that conference, uh, we decided to do a special issue on youth resilience and well being. And this article that's in your Dropbox was uh, uh, targeted to go into that um, particular journal. Uh, the journal, as I mentioned, it's international, has a cat, it has an international readership, it has a high impact factor of about five. So it means any um, any given article is likely to get cited by other people at least five times. And um, I, because I'm the editor, I know that the number of articles that have come in for the special issue is now uh, so, uh, you know, quite large that we're going to have a two volume special issue on Indigenous uh, resilience and well-being. Um, so it won't just be dealing with child abuse issues, it won't just be dealing with child welfare related issues, but also, you know, broader uh, climate, uh, intersectional kinds of issues. Uh, and just as a note, as part of what we did in this, uh, a lot of the articles we've done are up on the Oneganos web and, uh, website, and we created a number of a resilience curricula that can be used as open access or broadly across the community and schools in Six Nations. And that was done again with, it, with Gawaneo and our advisory group uh, of your community members and, and elders and language um, experts. So Mohawk and Cayuga words are in some of the videos. And uh, I can share in this PowerPoint that I was gonna show, uh, with Brooks afterwards, if you'd like to have a look at the links 
to get to those um, videos. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks, Christine, uh, for that backgrounder. I'll look to questions. Open the floor up. I first uh, see uh, Audrey. Yeah, welcome. I'm thank interested you. in seeing the uh, the app. You have a page in your report there that shows the the layout of it, and uh, you would just briefly discuss what's on there so that people who are are viewing uh, live streaming can see where it is. Where is it? When it will be available? Where do they get it? It's free, or is it free? And um, it looks like it's really going to be of some benefit to our our uh, children, students who need it. Thank you. Thank you very much for those great questions. Um, right now, uh, I'll start with the end and work the other way. Uh, right now, we are working with uh, another researcher, Iceland Mosquash from Lakehead University to try and have a website um, posting of the app. So you could download it from a website. Previously, it was in the app store, but uh, we pulled it this year from the last year from the app store because we want to be sure that the research is complete and that you know something can look really good, but we wanna make sure it actually has a real impact. Um, so it's part of the quote unquote evidence-based practice. Uh, in terms of what the app looks like, um, what I'm going to try and find on my computer is a visual, which I might not get. Um, there is a uh, four minute video on our YouTube channel called Resilience in Youth that um, uh, describes and explains the, jo the Joy Pop app. And if you just bear with me for a second, I'm just gonna see if I can pull up the visuals that you might like to see. And then I can share a screen. Yeah, you should, Christine, you should have access to it as well, the share screen. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm gonna just do share screen and then you can let me know if what you're seeing is this uh, Resilience in Youth website. I think it should work. There, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so you go on to the uh, youth resili youthresilience.net. That's the website that you can go and get this information. There's a tab on top called Joy Pop app. You might also be interested in this 2020 Resilience Conference information over here, because that is on climate change and resilience. And it just has some information that you might be interested in. And uh, the website, the YouTube channel was uh, Resilience in Youth as well. And we have all of our resilience curricula there, all of the stuff on Joy Pop there. And we have some uh, Six Nation Youth videos on there. So that is open access that can be used. So this is the basic look of the app. When we go down, it kind of looks like this. It's, uh, this is the color range. And um, these are the screens per uh, page. So I'm probably not the best <laughs> working my own computer, but uh, let me just try and close the gallery. So you have here the uh, activity screen that shows uh, that there's a breathing exercise and a square moves game and art. Uh, this is the landing page that has a, a slogan, happiness starts with you. It's hard to see because of this blue light color, but there's a phone icon here that if you hit that on any page, there's a drop down menu on the, of uh, distress lines. Here we have, um, this is for a circle of trust where you input people that you could call when you would like to speak with them. This is a book that signals the journaling to, and we give you prompts to do journaling. That is the activities that lead you to over here. And this is the mood rating. And this far one where you have the smiley face, this is the mood. So you might have to rate happy and you just like a wave, scroll it up and down. And then in the back end, it gives you like, uh, you know, 10%. Uh, okay, I'm gonna just move this over to that. If you bear with me to the moods. Okay, so you have like, um, you get to, say how uh, positive or happy you're feeling and you scroll it up or down. 
how sad, how angry, how meh, like neither here nor there. Um, and then there's a uh, breathing uh, that helps you with just going through uh, diaphragmatic breathing. So you follow, um, you follow this dot, it grows and you breathe in and it shrinks and you breathe out. And you basically just follow the dot for, for some controlled breathing. We also have a sleep ease that kind of, uh, you can put some uh, water sounds in place to help you fall asleep. And this one that you're seeing now with the circles is the, um, what's called the circle of trust, where you input different people, an elder, mentor, auntie, whatever, around yourself. And then when you want to, you can call them. And it's really about calling the person. And if you don't get them uh, or you leave a message, you're brought back into the app so you can return to some of the activities. Um, and um, yeah, so the activities that uh, youth really, uh, like when it came to um, the adults, the adults really liked, especially the circle of trust. That, that social connection. Um, the other article we have about the youth, uh, the, which you haven't seen yet, hasn't been submitted to the ethics because we're still finishing writing it. The youth, they really felt connect, that they could utilize um, most the breathing exercises, just learning to take deep breaths. And they uh, felt that the gaming, which is Tetris, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Tetris, but that's an, a free game on the internet where the blocks come down and you have to put it into shape. So your mind is really working with uh, or orientation and things like that. So you're focusing. And if you're focusing like that, you, you're not going to be thinking about negative thoughts or ruminating thoughts going around and around. Um, uh, I'm going to try and stop sharing. So stop sharing. You will really appreciate that that uh, in depth look into the app. I think that's a good point to see uh, for our community to uh, to see uh, what it's like. I'm going to further open uh, the floor up for any further questions or comments. I see Councillor Nathan has his hand raised. Oh, okay. Uh, Nathan is moving on the recommendation, uh, looking to a seconder, seconded by Michelle. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the motion? I think it's a wonderful project, Christine, and anything uh, further in terms of collaboration that we can do. I mean, we're always trying to make sure our young people, uh, you know, are okay and are, you know, support, are supported. So I think it's a great uh, initiative. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing and motion is carried. A motion to waive second reading on the two previous motions. Moved by Nathan, seconded by Michelle to waive second reading again on the two previous motions. All in favor? Any opposed? A seeing or hearing and motion is carried. Well, thank you so much, uh, Christine, for joining us this evening. Uh, do look forward to the progress made uh, with this uh, initiative and project uh, and wishing you all the best in anything further that we could do. I'm sure uh, you know where to find us. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure. Take good care and have a wonderful evening. Likewise. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Okay, Council, uh, we've already completed our Council minutes as well as just started Recommendation 7-1 under scheduling. Uh, so schedule uh, Recommendation 7-2. Uh, I've already reached out uh, to uh, Councilor Sherry Lynn. This one is again in relation to the JTree Border Alliance Summit, but this is more uh, in relation to the high level working group. So there's two really uh, distinct, the distinction between the two. Uh, one is in relation to the UNDRIP and what that refer or looks like uh, with our work at the Alliance. And then two, uh, this one is in Vancouver. Uh, however, I do need a counselor to attend with me as Sherry Lynn is unavailable to attend. Uh, I know Sherry Lynn and I have kind of been the lead uh, on the Jade Treaty border stuff. Uh, Lori Miller as well will be attending uh, with us in Milwaukee uh, and uh, as well, I believe in Vancouver. Um, so I am looking for a counselor to travel with me as well uh, to um, Vancouver during this comment? time, January 31 and February 1st. Helen? 
Yeah, I thought the one in Vancouver was only for chiefs. Not to my knowledge. The high level committee is only for chiefs. Yeah, so that, but there's two things happening there. We're going to do the first, the high level, and still another. Oh, chief. okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, that one is just for chiefs, the high level working group. Oh. Is there any further questions, comments? Uh, and if not, is there a counselor interested uh, in attending with me in Vancouver on January 31st and February 1st? Not sure if anyone is available. And if not, I will need a motion for myself to attend. Okay. Oh, cool. okay. Thanks for that, Helen. So if there's a, mo a mover to uh, Audrey, moved by Audrey, uh, seconded by Nathan uh, for myself and Helen to attend uh, January 31, the first in Vancouver uh, to participate again in the J Treaty Border Alliance Summit. Is there any further questions, comments? seeing or hearing none all in favor any opposed seeing or hearing none motion is carried and that one's on the 31st yeah so we would actually travel the 30th helen so we'll work with uh, brooke and uh shirley to get us to travel um okay so the next one i have is in relation to because i will be a uh, travel day on seven uh, on the 17th uh to milwaukee uh, there's also a prep session happening. I believe Greg uh, attended uh, leadership council last, one of them. Um, so I'm looking for a representative to also attend the next leadership council. This is a prep session. They don't have Zoom available, which I was trying to get on. Um, so I'll, we would need it for the 16th, which is the prep session uh, leading up to the premier's meeting on the 17th. So I, I'm going to, yeah, next week. So because I'm going to be uh, attending this, I'm going to try my very best to get on the, the leadership council from one till three on the 17th. But I am looking for a representative to, on our behalf, to attend the prep session and the premier's meeting. Okay, is there anyone further? Nathan, are you available? On the 16th. That's a six, well, it's saying then the 17th morning for the premier's meeting itself. That's only expected to take, I believe, up to... Yeah. Okay. So, can that, with that being said, can I get a motion for Nathan uh, to attend uh, the uh, prep meeting and the premier's meeting, um, and and we'll obviously report back to council. Moved by Audrey, seconder. Second by Greg. I'll second, Mabel. And that is for Monday uh, as well as Tuesday morning um, in Toronto. So it's moved by Greg, seconded by Melba. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. Uh, and as I think it was uh, Tammy had sent this out to council, uh, we want to get our, I know this is our rescheduled date from our retreat, which was supposed to happen uh, in December. However, we have two dates now that have seemed to be the most uh, workable, either the 14th through the 16th and the 21st through the 23rd in February. So I'm basically looking for direction at this point in time so that we can secure these dates. Uh, looking to council, what best works. Again, I do recognize that this, is, this would be a mandatory session for all of council. We just were trying to work around all and everything else we have in the in between, like the J Treaty borderline stuff and so forth. So looking to see if the 14th or the 21st. So it's a two day retreat. Again, this goes over our final year to our term and the projects that we can complete within that term. So, okay, I'm hearing 2123 in the in the chambers here. 2123 online. Audrey, I can't make the 21st. Okay, uh, Helen. No, I was just gonna say, are we picking dates now or? It's yeah, just out of these two dates, it's come down to over from the I'm, email. I'm okay poll. for either one of them now. Okay, so I'm wondering <laughs> just based on. The twenty first. Is it the full day, Audrey? No, like it's only day? a part day in the afternoon, for okay. about an hour. Okay, no problem. Is I think that's okay then for most on the twenty first to the twenty third. Is that okay? With uh, I will take into consideration, Audrey, uh, your one hour. Is it break. in person? Is yes. It in person, Niagara Falls again. Yes. 
Okay, well, if I could step out for that that time that I need. No problem. Okay, uh, Council, so we will, we, it sounds like we're in agree agreement. Uh, Shirley, for the February 21st to the 23rd, if you could put that in your calendars. 21st uh, that, to 23rd? That's right. Yeah. Okay, thanks. We don't need an, uh, a motion to that effect. Uh, I had no new business. I covered the scheduling. Uh, with that being said, I will look to a motion to adjourn. Or just really quickly, just before I do adjourn, uh, I wanted to just under community safety because I feel this does fall under it. As you know, we've been experiencing a lot of loss uh, in our community uh, of all ages in a lot of tra traumatic uh, events. Uh, and so I uh, wanted to start to look at ways of how our community can come together um, and really almost like a healing uh, event. Um, and so we right now I've reached out already, Shirley, uh, and through health supports, there's already some work happening for an event. So we're going to collaborate uh, and, and hopefully have this within the next, like our goal is to have it in the next month or so, um, uh, so that we can, again, just kind of bring our community together. Uh, there's been a lot, again, a lot of loss of, of our members, um, just a, lo a lot of hard, hard times. And so we kind of want to really uplift and, and really uh, look to even the traditional aspect, uh, really just be inclusive of of uh, of everyone. Uh, and so just wanted to give you a heads up that uh, we will be planning the chief's office with uh, the necessary departments uh, and supports uh, to be putting this event on and we'll advise you as uh, more details uh, get figured out in the logistical pieces of the event. But just wanted to put that on your radar that we do plan uh, to have this style of an event in the next uh, coming weeks for our community, just as an FYI. <clears throat> that being said, that does complete uh, the agenda for this evening of general council. At this point in time, I will look for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Nathan, seconder. Seconded by Michelle. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. And again, I uh, uh, want to just uh, send our most heartfelt, sincere condolences to uh, all of Bill, former Chief Bill Montour's family and friends. Do appreciate everything that he's, uh, he's done for this community. Now, everybody, and I hope you have a great evening. <laughs>